About a year or two ago, I stumbled across H3H3 Productions, which is the YouTube channel of Ethan and Gila Klein. I think they are absolutely hilarious. And I say that as an adult feminist woman who is probably not their target demographic, like most YouTubers, I assume uh, their target demographic is like 14 year old boys, but I guess that's just where my sense of humor is. Uh, but they're genuinely funny, and I also really appreciate the way that they use their huge platform to occasionally debunk bullshit. Like, for instance, they push back really hard on those racist, sexist prank videos that are really just completely staged. For instance, uh, Prank Invasion is a channel that recently did a video where a guy supposedly just happens across a Muslim woman on the street and convinces her to make out with him. And he runs his hand up her leg and up her burqa where he discovers she's wearing a thong. And it's like, come on. Uh, Ethan and Gila did a video where they talk about how obviously staged this whole thing is, but a portion of their audience being probably mostly 14 year old boys still wanted to believe that it was true. So they went a step further and they actually uh, found the woman in the video and interviewed her where she talked about being a hired actor in this video and how she didn't even realize it was supposed to be like a prank video. Uh, so good for them for putting the final nail in the coffin there. Um, but the problem is that in addition to going after sexist bullshit like that and helping teach 14 year old boys that Muslim women aren't all just waiting for them to grab them off the street and make out with them, uh, they also make a few videos purporting to make fun of feminists. For instance, there's a video called Crazy Feminist Gets Triggered, and it features an actual crazy person. It's a woman who was filming outside of a courtroom and she uh, starts badgering a random man and demands to know his name. He replies, humongous, hilarious, again, 14 year old sense of humor, uh, which makes her flip out and she accuses him of sexually harassing her. Uh, and she's 100% in the wrong. Uh, but making a video mocking her with dog whistles in the title, like crazy feminist and triggered, basically means that this is clickbait for the huge, very motivated online crowd of misogynists who like to find these videos and then circle jerk over them. And if you look in the comments, that's what's happening. There's one genius who says to feminists, get laid, you fat piece of shit, which doesn't even make sense for that video because the woman in the video uh, isn't even on camera, but the man is, and he is fat. So what are you trying to say there, buddy? Uh, like many YouTubers, Ethan and Gila seem to have a blind spot for how their anti-feminist videos enable the alt-right. I think they probably see it as just both sides. You know, they make fun of the misogynists and they make fun of the feminists. Um, but it's actually possible to criticize women and feminists. Most of these like anti-feminist videos don't even feature anyone identifying themselves as a feminist. It just happens to be a woman uh, without chumming the waters for uh, comments like, is this why men hit women? Which is another top comment on that triggered video. But they either don't know that or they don't care. And I prefer to believe it's the former because I like them and I want them to be as smart and thoughtful as they seem in a lot of their videos. And not like, for instance, Thunderfoot, who just churns out these anti-feminist videos because he knows that they bring in all of these views from misogynists. Um, Unfortunately, the occasional anti-feminist video isn't the only way that Ethan and Gila fed into the alt-right. Recently, they jumped on an alt-right bandwagon that claimed that the evil fake news Wall Street Journal had photoshopped an image of Coca-Cola ads onto a controversial, aka racist, YouTube video. Ethan claimed that he had proof that it was photoshopped because the video in question uh, had no ad revenue after September of 2016. He says that that means no ads could have appeared on the video, and so the Wall Street Journal definitely photoshopped it. It's not true. And that's been confirmed by the Wall Street Journal and people who are familiar with YouTube ad revenue. Uh, the video's creator didn't get any ad revenue, not because there were no ads on the video, but because he used a song that was under copyright. And all of the proceeds from the ads went to the song's creators 
the racist songs creators, for the record. Uh, The whole fake ad Photoshop rumor was just yet another alt-right goose chase designed to undermine the anti-Trump, anti-alt-right media. And it worked. Reddit's Donald Trump subreddit jumped all over it. Uh, Infowars ran with it. And they all focused on the person who Ethan told them to harass, the Wall Street Journal reporter Jack Nikas, who was buried in death threats after Ethan showed his Twitter account to his audience, claiming that that's the guy who photoshopped the images. I'll quote from Ethan's now removed video targeting Jack Nikas. It seems like some simple fact checks could have gone out to it before you completely demonized and destroyed a platform. But instead of a platform, it's a person. A person Ethan and Gila could have reached out to privately before telling nearly 4 million people to go harass him. Ethan on Twitter called what he did a gaffe, but it's a lot more than that. It's firebombing a guy's life. Everybody makes mistakes, but as a person's platform grows, those mistakes can have bigger and bigger consequences, especially when you're playing up to the alt-right. 